Welcome to St Cyprian's Church Online Worship for the weekend of the 29th of August. I'm sat here in this corner because this is the first time that I'm recording this, the first time we've had services without the screen for the last 18 months. It just gives a chance to show the pulpit which has been hidden away for all this time. So I thought I'd leave from here. But I'm going to start with a couple of readings from the Bible. The first one, these are short readings. The first one is from James chapter 1 and begins at verse 17. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfilment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we will become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. The second reading is from Mark's Gospel, it's chapter 7, and this begins at verse 1. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honours me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Let's have a pause and then we'll have some thoughts.
At first, COVID-19 was something we had to react, react to, designing systems and policies and way of acting that coped with the pandemic. Whether testing or lockdowns or medical processes or vaccination, it was an ongoing issue getting in place ways of doing things to fight the virus. Now there's still a lot of that going on, but we're increasingly getting to a place where we're reflecting on changes, how it has affected us and the world, how it will be different afterwards. Sometimes we forget how things were before, and maybe I'm wrong, things could have been just as bad before, but one of the things that seem to have increased with the tension of the pandemic is anger. Anger at people, finger pointing at people, accusing people, not forgiving people. I know I do it. You only have to have a quick look at social media to see how much seems to mark our culture at the moment. You could perhaps say, I'm angry with all the anger that's around at the moment. It's something that those two short readings are about. In the Gospel one, from Mark, we have the religious leaders being angry with the disciples of Jesus for eating with defiled hands, not keeping to the traditions, not doing what is right, at least in their eyes. Jesus wasn't happy with them. In the reading from James, James says quite clearly that anger is wrong. We should be slow to anger, that anger does not produce God's righteousness. It might produce human righteousness, but not God's. Anger hurts. It hurts others, the people we attack, point at. More importantly, it hurts us, as it stops us enjoying the world we live in. As it wounds us, leaves us scars, unable to enjoy what someone may have, unable to enjoy memories. The world sees anger as an appropriate way to respond to what's going on. Too often, Christians see anger as an appropriate way to respond. I have to qualify all this. Jesus on the other occasion does get very angry. But he's still the slowest person to anger and never leaves anyone outside of his love. I think he says two things to the religious leaders in the Mark reading. First, you are angry about the wrong things. Does it matter if people eat the wrong way? Don't know about you, but when I was a kid, it was always horribly wrong to eat with your elbows on the table. It was the ultimate sin in many homes, and certainly a significant sin in mine. Really? Is having your elbows on the table going to bring down civilization? No, of course not. Be angry at injustice, at lack of love, but leave our anger in the event and never carry it forward to the person. Try to see it God's ways. Don't do what is humanly instinctive. This is the second point that Jesus is making. Don't do what is humanly instinctive. Point the finger, live in anger. Jesus says, you do this rather than seek God's commandment. And God's commandment to love him and to love one another, everyone, everywhere. I do think we've got the ultimate example. We have it in Jesus. Jesus never stopped loving right to the cross, right to his death. There were moments of anger on the journey, but Jesus left his life loving all of those in the world even those who had killed him. Again, we'll have another pause and then we'll have some prayers.
Okay, so let's pray. Lord God, I pray that you forgive me for my anger, for the fury I feel at times with others, with this world. Help me to forgive, help me to love, help me to keep loving. Lord, times are tough and difficult. I pray you give me strength to walk as you walked in this world. And I do pray, Lord, for this world and all of those who are suffering and struggling in this world, those living in fear. I pray, Lord, for all areas where the pandemic is so harsh and difficult. I pray, Lord, for people who have the virus, those who are suffering because of it, those who have lost family and friends because of it. I pray, Lord, that the vaccine will be shared fairly. This time, Lord, also pray for parts of our world where there is conflict and tension. Pray particularly for Afghanistan. Lord, it is so difficult. I pray that you do what is right. I pray, Lord, for our own country. Help us, Lord, to love and care for our leaders, our politicians, as much as we find their activity, their behaviour unacceptable. Help us never to stop loving, helping, supporting. We pray, Lord, you give them wisdom and strength to do what they have to do to fulfil the calling you have given to them. I pray, Lord, for the community of which I am part. I pray, Lord, for the schools, people suffering, people struggling. And pray, Lord, that through the love that we show, more and more people will turn to you and find your strength and help. Lord, I pray for my family, my friends, everyone I touch in my daily life, that for me they'll experience love and not anger. Lord, I pray for people, individuals I know who are suffering at the moment. I remember the friend in hospital with chest infection following COVID. I remember the husband struggling with cancer and the son who has heart trouble. I pray, Lord, for others I know who are ill at this time. May you give them strength and hope in their darkness. And Lord, I pray for everyone watching this video, that you'll be with them. Give them love and not hate. Fear, turn it away, Lord. Anger, squash it aside. Help us, Lord, all to find love. And ask these prayers in the name of Jesus. Amen. You may perhaps want to say the Lord's Prayer with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. St Cyprian's Church is open for worship at the moment on a Sunday morning at half past ten. And you'll be welcome to come along, everyone's welcome. That service at half past ten is also streamed live and the access codes to the Zoom link are on the front of our website and that website was on the front of the panel of this video. We are praying for you. We do pray that God, through his spirit, will have strengthened and help you. Pray, Lord, that he'll be with you through this week. May God bless you. Amen. <laughs>